Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. What are we doing? Is the big question. Well, I've been really busy. I've been really busy brewing beer, consistently brewing beer, and uh, trying to keep up. And then also firefighting a little bit with uh, certain pieces of machinery. And you'll notice on the right here, we've got our new hydrocarbon cooler, brand spanking new from Booth Dispensers. And on the left, we've got our Cornelius Classic 1000, and it has been taken to pieces. So I'll give you a little bit of a look-see at what we've got going on in there. So that big black thing at the back is a compressor, and that gray thing is a heat exchanger, plate heat exchanger. But it's one that's designed for refrigerant gases on one side and liquid on the other so instead of having a big radiator at the back you know like you would on a fridge or a freezer that black grill kind of thing that's used to radiate the heat into the air in your kitchen to keep your fridge or freezer cold well this does the same thing but that heat exchanger takes away the heat and dumps it outside dumps it outside onto a or via a heat dump so if we look at the new one we'll see we've got a very similar setup we've got the pump there this pinky looking tank because it's got glycol in it is the reservoir for the heat that is going to go through the plate exchanger in the back you can just about make out the plate exchanger down the bottom there you can see it's side on you can see the red pipe going into it through that white disconnect and extra to what is on the old Cornelius is two cooling fans providing some secondary cooling to the compressor itself and then moving up to the top all that bottom area there is what is cooling the coils that run around the box around this glycol reservoir and in the glycol reservoir we have pink glycol and that is being cooled by this system down at the bottom and then that obviously whatever is in this tank does not mix with this tank this gets pumped outside through these pipes on the wall and out to a heat dump what does a heat dump look like you might ask well I've got a couple here that we can actually have a look at some brand new heat dumps so on the back these are side on by the way that would be the correct orientation for them but yeah on the back you can see we have cooling fins and a series of copper pipes running back and forth here we have an intake and an outlet for such copper pipes very similar to a car radiator in fact almost identical just the way it's laid out is different these are designed to have an interchangeable cartridge so if you spring a leak you don't have to change the whole shebang you can just pull this cartridge out by removing this screw and this will slide out in one neat little square leaving behind what's on the front so in here we have a 24 volt fan we can see through the side of the fins there and that 24 volt fan will come on when our glycol machine turns on and the glycol will be running through here and that fan will be dumping the heat outside of your venue your brewery your pub cell whatever you want so that is what a heat dump looks like and this will mount on the wall outside so I fashioned one for the Cornelius cooler that we've got here out of a car radiator and it's worked really quite well up to now but we have a leak on this one somewhere which is why I'm taking it apart because I can't find the leak it's a very small one and it, uh, it might actually not be a leak but let me come back to that in a second so looking again at the cooler we've got our glycol reservoir tank being cooled by the accessories underneath and the heat dump outside 
Now this glycol, as you can see, is sitting at zero degrees. It was at minus one a minute ago, but I've just turned the fans back on in the cold room, so it's, uh, it's dumping some heat into the glycol reservoir. So that's what this pump does on top. This is a recirculation pump. This runs at 240 volts, and this is wired into here, and uh, then via, via some circuitry in there, just mainly jumper cables, so I don't have too many dossing around. And then into a Robo Swift connector, which I have on all of my temperature controllers. And they're all identical, these little things here. And you can see they can be daisy chained. I've got two linked together here. And same on the, on the fermenting tanks. All of these can be linked up together to run off one cooler. But I tend to do one or two fermenters or one or two cold rooms per cooler. And if one cooler fails, we still have a little bit of redundancy in the system and not everything goes down. So, where was I? Anyway, this is going to monitor the temperature inside the cold room and when it gets too warm, it'll turn on that pump at the top. That one that we talked about here. And then that will recirculate this cold glycol which is being cooled independently, that's got its own temperature control, look it's chilling, it's gone 0.1 degree colder. And then yeah, it'll pump that glycol into the cold rooms where it will be fed into a car radiator actually on my, in this instance, but you could use one of those heat dumps in reverse. And that's picking up the heat from the cold room and it's dumping it into this reservoir and then the cycle begins again. It goes through the accessories at the bottom and outside to the heat dump where it's released to the atmosphere. The heat, that is. So, it's basically a heat dump with two components. If the cold rooms don't require chilling, then that pump won't be on. And if this glycol reservoir achieves its set temperature, which I think is minus 1.5 in this instance, then the accessories at the bottom will turn off and everything will remain at that temperature. If it warms up a little bit, this will kick back on again to cool it down. And if the cold rooms, like let's say in winter, don't need any cooling, then this barely is used. It'll come on once or twice a day just to maintain the reservoir temperature and then maybe occasionally a cold room will want a little bit of uh, cooling but in the winter the duty cycle on this is very low in the summer it's almost a hundred percent and that's probably why we've seen some problems with our classic 1000 Cornelius so this bad boy there's its model uh, it really is quite a good machine, it's very robust and it's got some miles on the clock. I don't know if I can get round the back but there was a, a stamp on here and it had a date on it. I think it said 2004, I can't see actually unless I look through the screen. Uh, yeah, I'm struggling to see, does that say 2000? Anyway, you tell me in the comments, I can't see it. Either way, that bad boy has got some miles on the clock and she's still ticking. She's still going. Well, she was until I just started taking her apart. So as I said, there's a leak somewhere. Here are the link cables for the heat dump outside, just uh, capped off at the moment. They'll go in the back there and there's usually a reservoir tank just here just like that one and a pump at the side of it just like that one and then that pumps through that heat exchanger at the back and outside as I've already explained but something somewhere is a leaking I'm not sure whether it's the pump some of these John Guest fittings or whatever 
I'm not sure whether it was the reservoir tank. I'm pretty sure it's not the heat dump outside because I pressure tested it recently. So what I think could be a secondary cause of the problem or the leak or losing liquid from this supposedly closed system is the fact that the way this was plumbed in so whoever had worked on it before had done it a little bit kind of out of sequence I think so this pump was pumping out to the heat dump straight away that was the first thing it was doing and then the liquid was coming back from the heat dump through the plate heat exchanger and into the reservoir therefore hot water was now going into the reservoir and then out of the reservoir into the pump and out, out to the heat dump it's not how I'd do it I'd pump it out of the pump through the heat exchanger and out to the heat dump so we had cool liquid coming back in to our reservoir tank reason one being that you're not heating your reservoir tank up then your reservoir tank is still in the building your heat dumps outside surely it's better to keep the cool liquid coming into the reservoir tank and then two you're getting a higher temperature gradient if you're coming straight out of the heat exchanger to the heat dump instead of letting it radiate a little bit of heat to the machinery around the reservoir tank I hope that makes sense so when I put this back in what I'm going to do is rejig the plumbing slightly so hopefully it's pumping the right way around and it is a little bit more efficient I've looked at the new model that we've got out yonder and that's exactly how they've configured theirs and uh, well this is a new fandangle jobby that we've just bought last month so one would expect it to be top notch and set up correctly I think so I'm going to investigate a little bit further this is like a March May pump or something similar to that uh, take it apart get a bit of a spruce up I think clean it a touch and then uh, hopefully put it back together with no leaky loose. Just as the heavens are about to open for a beautiful, humid summer storm, you'll note that the top fan is spinning. That means I have indeed reassembled the Cornelius 1000, classic 1000 no less, and she is doing some work. I've really tidied up, it's going to be loud, tidied up the pipe work, alright you might not agree with me there, but I definitely have, and I've turned the pump around, so it's feeding out the bottom of the reservoir tank straight into the pump, I think it's a lot neater, the temperature is dropping dramatically, because, or climbing should I say, because I've just turned the cold room back on. Now the cold room was at 15.9 degrees before I started rolling on the camera. And we're now at 15 on the dot. And I imagine if I stop here for 30 seconds or so, you'll see it drop another point of a degree because it tends to go rather quickly. There we are. Rather quickly down to temp. So, Shall we have a little bit of a catch up now? We've got that out of the way. It's been a while since I've done a video, uh, at least two weeks. So let's have a quick walk around. Loads of grain in stock. There's also a big pallet full of it there. Not much has been going on in the workshop. I've done a couple of welding jobs, uh, but still not got around to building the new welding table that's probably going to be a project that gets waylaid considerably uh, let's have a look beer wise uh, made, I made eight batches of beer last week, week before we've also got an American IPA in here with Vic Secret Simcoe I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well she's beginning to clear nicely, you can almost see a tie line there, look where she's clearing but she's been sat at four degrees for a week or so now. Oh, we've got some new scales 
from Marsden's proper CE marked uh, trade rated scales and I also did the same thing over here they weren't cheap so these are now uh, well yeah they come with this so apparently according to trading standards you need that kind of thing so we've got that there we go uh, I've got a little bit of a soak tank going on here this has got so uh, sodium hypochlorite in it and that is cleaning the inside of the long pipes off of the boil kit and the boil kit is semi stripped as you can see so the last beer I made on here was a coconut shy I always like to give it a good clean afterwards I've even stripped the pump down taking it apart it's ready for some new seals so I'm in the market for a new pump just in case because if that one packs up then I don't have a pump for the brew kit Gemma's recently just taken the vacant gesture out of this tank this houses vacant gesture also as does this this one you'll be pleased to know has in it a large batch of the raspberry sour so that's had the juice in there already and we're just waiting for it to reach terminal gravity before we knock it out into cans and keg coconut in that one and then in four three and one we've got pock pock and pock there we go we did a little bit more canning recently we've put away another couple of hundred cans of porter and plum porter got a new run of labels here they are so if you've been collecting the labels you'll notice we now have a little fermenter robot fermenter on there this is now going to be our brewery logo thanks to Tortec info on Instagram he's designed that for us obviously we painted it on the doors it's on the stairs and all that kind of stuff it is the mutts nuts and uh, yeah thank you very much sir for letting me have that wonderful piece of artwork and then here Again, courtesy of Mr. Tortec Info, he's helped me design some of the labels here for the trial batch beers. So what we're going to do, and I've already started it actually, is uh, any trial recipes, we just stick one of these labels on. I've got a black one and a red one. And then they don't have an actual beer name or an ABV or anything on there. So we stick a little bit of a label on there with all the details on and those of you with a keen eye will recognize it's the control panel from the pilot kit I think it's wonderful I really do and the pilot kit is over there sat to waiting but well, that's it I think we're pretty much caught up boys and girls I really do think we are um, got to extend the stairs here at some point we can't get to this tank so I'm just gonna bring this out another well probably to the edge of this here where this uh, canister is the co2 canister just so we can get up onto that corner a little bit easier because it's quite awkward to get that lid off and yeah we're down to 12.6 degrees on that cold room now it's only going to 11 which is cell attempts and there we go everything is tickety boo ladies and gentlemen and i think i'm gonna sign off so there we go another vlog in the bag oh look I'm beading I'm beading anyway um, I'm not a massive football fan but uh, we've got England playing tonight against Denmark in the semi-finals of the European Cup so I'm actually going to treat myself have a couple of beers go home and watch it and uh, you know you should too I reckon I hope I get this video up before the match starts I'm going to go home and edit it straight away so before I go I haven't said it for a while, but I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. It's helping me do what I'm doing in here without having to worry too much about any financial support to buy camera gear and spend a little bit of time out of work making these videos. If it wasn't for you boys and girls doing that, then the videos would tail off rapidly, I'm pretty sure. I'd also like to thank all the subscribers, old and new, for sticking with me. It's been a long ride, but uh, 
I think we're over the peak now, aren't we? I really do. I think uh, we're rolling downhill a little bit more than we were a year ago. Um, so yeah, that's it. Going to wrap it up. Uh, stick around. Subscribe, of course. It's important that you do. We're going to do some exciting videos in the coming months. And uh, oh, summer's here, isn't it? So we might even get to have a few jollies out of town and uh, go and meet up with some other folk as well. There we go. Stop waffling. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.